Hello everybody, it's me again. A couple of videos ago I talked about fixing this snow plow. A uh, minute mount, I guess it's one. I know the boys have minute mount twos, but this is a big old dog. Nine, I think a nine foot blade, heavy. So I'm just bringing you up the speed. I, I didn't film any of this, uh, but I repacked the cylinder, brand new rod, seals, and a split bearing down the bottom. I call it a stop, but they call it a bearing. Changed the oil in it. Put a new cylinder here. What else did I do? I had to uh, just try to fit this up. I don't know what kind of truck it was on. We're putting it on a 350, F350 dually. So I had to lengthen the lift chain a little bit. Also had to move these up because I couldn't get it on the truck uh, the right way. Let's see, what else did I do? I made a little bracket here. This, uh, this spring here was just laying there, doing no good. It's just to help you keep this upright when, you, when it's not attached to the truck. So no big, big deal. But I ended up just welding a nut down on the bottom. And then you can slowly take this off. There's some uh, pressure there. You don't want to get away from you if you're not expecting it. So the other thing I discovered, we got this plow. I think the boys got it for free. So now we're we're digging in here. If you can see that, we had it all hooked up. Everything was working fine, electrical on the truck side. Plugged it in, everything works. And then it started getting funky on us, and I realized that thing's been chewed. So that could be a problem. <laughs> then, of course, I realized that somebody had torn the casing open and doctored this. But the good news is that I happen to have an old wiring harness because we never throw anything away with a plug and it is from a minute mount so I'm planning on taking the whole thing off and putting a whole new wiring harness on there but the thing I'm working uh, with now and the only really thing that makes this worthy of filming at all is for whatever reason here, the safety chain or travel chain or whatever you wanna say, I discovered that when you hang it up, the way it's positioned, it wants to come right through this fitting. I can't go over it or it pushes down and I can't go under it and it pushes up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make another bracket like this and I'm going to weld it down right here so it'll be not quite as straight up and down but uh, I think it'll be good for and then it'll get the interference out of there but anyway uh, I don't really need to do this but normally I would just drill a hole right here and take the cutoff wheels and cut that slot out of there. But I thought, I haven't used my milling machine lately. I'm going to see if I can mill that slot in there. So I got a 3 8 end mill in there. So that's what I'm working on doing right now. Okay, here we are. 
so I'll tell you you can watch all the videos you want but when you're actually doing it then then the questions pop up so I was wondering do I should I just mill back and forth using the very end and just keep going back and forth or shall I come down here and just slowly go through the whole thing at at once I don't know what I'll do maybe I'll do the uh, I'll just take a skim coat and then I don't know well you know what let's try it right now how's that sound I uh, you know all right you're gonna hear the that's the static converter banging around a little bit I wish I had a tripod but let's see if I can get the light where it'll do us some good all right here we go wrong way It's hard to to do and to oh hang on oh that end mill snuck out of there all right so I'm gonna stop and then I will tighten that up which I thought I did and then I'll bring you back okay. Yeah, I brought you back. I I really cranked down on the collet here, so maybe I didn't have that tight enough. So I'll turn this thing on and uh, see if I can do this and film it at the same time. I don't know if that's actually coming out. Woo! That thing is swinging some. It looks like it's working. So let me keep going. Let me uh, add some add some oil to this thing. Vibrating a lot. All right. Definitely got some vibration going there. I have this whole milling machine on caster so I can move it around. And that sounds like what's vibrating. But this darn thing is working. bring it right back I want to get an air hose okay so what was happening here is I didn't have my quill uh, locked and it was coming down so it wasn't the collet being loose at all just learning this stuff as I go all right so let me turn it on again and we'll keep going That darn uh, static converter, for some reason, 
past the bump. Uh, You know what? I actually think something's loose. Let me tighten everything up, the vise. Uh, but it's cutting like mad. Look at that. Of course, if I was uh, just to drill it and cut it with the uh, cut off disc. I'd have been done by now, but what fun is that? Alright, let me tighten everything down and I'll bring you back. Okay, here we go again. I cranked everything down. Uh, the vise and everything I could. Uh, so let's see if we can get this going again. I'm just slowly hand feeding the table here. Maybe if I can uh, speed the video up somehow, then you guys don't have to watch all this. But it is working really good. That is three eighths of an inch thick metal there, plate steel. actually watching this thing through my phone. If I keep doing this, I'm going to have to get a regular camera. I figured at some point I got to get off the couch and start doing, right? You think you're learning on online, but you really learn by doing. So we're all learning together right now, huh? Definitely got a vibration in there. But I feel like I can easily cut faster, but it would vibrate. So just keep slow going. I'm about halfway there. I don't even know how, what is the life of an end mill? Will I be able to make, you know, miles of cuts like this? Or is this going to ruin the whole thing? I don't know. that are locked in the vise of this plate steel. I, I cut them with the grinding wheel, so they're probably not parallel, perfectly parallel. So that might be a little problem. But I really crank down on this vise. But 
it is still a half man. It is still a Cranking the table with one hand and trying to watch the phone and the action. Yeah, I don't know what's creating that big vibration. I'm going to be digging into that a little bit. I don't know whether, for the simple fact, the whole machine, all 1,150 pounds of this thing being on the casters, whether that's it's the whole machine's jumping around and I need to have it on concrete, or whether there's some uh, vibration here. I was thinking I could lock down the... but I gotta turn it let me try that I'll bring you back okay I snugged up that and this hopefully not to the point I can't slide left to right but I also snugged up that that and that so let's see if this gets any better I'm going to get some oil. I don't know if we need it, but what the heck, right? Well, still definitely got a vibration, but it's cutting. Get to the end of that. This thing really cuts pretty well. That is pretty thick steel there. Maybe even a little bit over three eighths of an inch. find a way to speed this video up because this is probably getting boring for you guys but we're getting there
that off. Getting there, another quarter inch. I hope that's focused. I'm deep enough. What I'm going to do is come that way ahead just to clean up this edge. I was probably going the wrong way there, but let's go get back in there and we'll put it on the other side. Clean that edge up. Here we go. Son of a gun. I mean, total overkill for what I'm doing. Uh, but, I got some time on the milling machine. Now, I need to weld that bad boy right in there. And I'm going to leave that other one on there because it doesn't hurt anything. And if we have a new configuration there at some point... All right, well, I can't hold this and weld, so uh, I'll update you later. Thanks. Okay, so I deburred that thing. There's the other one. I figure I'm going to weld it right on there, but then I realize I need to hook this thing to the truck and lift the plow all the way up and make sure it doesn't have any interference with these when the plow's all the way up. So I can't weld that on there right now. But you know what I am going to do? I am going to, I have, I'm always curious, right? So how much does this, uh, how much does this plow weigh? So let's, I, I, I figure I got about four pounds of chains and other junk on there. Anybody have any guesses? Okay. Still picking the subframe up.
Mm -hmm. My son guessed about a thousand. Probably not quite that. The gantry cr crane is center in itself. Okay. off the ground. Ah, there it is. All right. Okay. This thing is hanging. I thought I saw 700 there, but we'll see here. Okay, can you see that? 840 pounds. 840 pounds. That's a lot of weight to throw on the front of a truck. All right, I'll bring you back. Okay, next up for the never ending repair job. That was broken off right there. I, I just cut that off. It should have a mechanism where you in and that's hooked up when you're hooking it up and then that pulls and holds that pin back so i've got a piece of scrap that i am going to weld on here so i will bring you back when that's done okay that was easy Okay, I'm still at this darn thing. I've got the new uh, wiring harness or new old from the boneyard. Just happened to have one. Kind of wire tied to the old one just so I don't lose track of uh, what's going on there. Uh, this is this is the new one. Everything is still on the old one, so I got to take them off of those solenoids there. Of course, this this box here broke because uh, it was kind of dry rotted getting these two screws out. So I uh, I love JB Weld for stuff, and I. Uh, I'm recreating that screw hole right there and a break right there and then I'm thinking maybe I can machine those uh, surfaces true in the morning we'll see okay well that's a tedious job but it's done splicing the new wiring harness in there it's amazing we had one of these the exact one we needed laying around that's one reason to buy the same stuff and don't throw it away anyway we're going to hook it up now see if the electronics work and um then lift it up hopefully they all do we'll lift it up and then i can weld that uh safety chain thing on there and then this bad boy is done okay it's the next day and this jb weld uh set up and i was able to mill if you will just playing actually recreate this uh, 
this stuff. I figure JB welds as strong as uh, plastic, right? So plastic is plastic. Anyway, I'll put this on and go from there. Okay, final, uh, final, last little bit of work there. Just hanging on this one, but that's the one, that's the new one. JB Weld worked out really well. Everything works. See if I can give you a shot of that. about doing. Thank you. Bye.